This is Math 142, and we are working on Section 5.3. This is Part 2 to the 5.3 lecture. And last time we talked about graphs of sine and cosine, how uh, sine, sine looks like this, starts at the midline, goes up and down, amplitude of 1, a period of 2 pi. And cosine, very same, very, very similar, amplitude of 1, uh, period of 2 pi still, but it starts at the max extreme instead of the other. But they look a lot alike. Uh, and then we had these these pieces right here for how these benchmark angles relate to the values of, of you know sine of each of those benchmark benchmark angles. We talked about how to move it up and down, how to compress it the period in the in the x direction, um, and how to stretch it, how to change that amplitude. So now what I want to do is one more little piece, and it's a piece that's in here. So let's take a look at both of these graphs. Uh, sine and cosine. So uh, here's sine. Sine's this this dotted line, and there's cosine like that. And you can see they look a lot alike. Um, you know, it looks like one's just a shifted version of the other. So um, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and shift sine to make it look like cosine, to make it become cosine. So y equals sine x. They just have sine x. Just going to look like that. I'm going to make this the same color. Um, now I noticed that um, when sine when sine takes in pi over two, it spits out a one. And what I want it to do is spit out a one at zero. I want to like shift the whole thing back to the left. So really, what I want to do when I have this uh, sine of x. When, when it's zero, when x is zero, I want it actually taking sine of pi minus pi over two. So how about I go like plus pi over two. Oh, look at that. So adding that pi over two, notice what it does is it shifts it left that amount. Um, and remember pi over two is 90 degrees. Sine and cosine have that, that um, complementary relationship, the sine and the complementary sine. So they're just off by 90 degrees from each other. So notice if I add pi over 2 to sine, it's going to shift it to the left. It's going to shift it back, pi over 2. Um, you know, if I had tried to subtract it, it's actually going to move it to the right. Things that go on inside the function are, are counterintuitive. It, it says subtract pi over 2, but it's shifting it to the right in a positive direction. That's because in a way it's delaying what's happening. It's making everything happen a little bit later. If I add pi over 2, it's making everything happen a little bit earlier. So for example, when x is 0, if I plug 0 into here, I'm going sine of 0. But notice if I plug 0 into here, I'm going sine of 0 plus pi over 2. I'm actually going sine of pi over 2. I'm getting that value, but I'm getting it when x is 0. It shifts it to the left that amount. So adding on the inside moves things left and right. Uh, just like multiplying in here messes with the period, compresses it, or dilates it left and right. Let's graph something like uh, y equals cosine of, of x minus pi. So notice I have the subtraction on the inside. Uh, let me add this into here. I'll just call it like minus, I'll just call it an h. And what this does is it moves it left right. It's called a phase shift. It's a shift in the phase. And if you uh, if you've done any um, music, like if you run your guitar through a pedal with a phase shifter, um, and listen to what happens, it might make sense if you think about the sound as a wave. So uh, y equals cosine of x minus pi. So what that's going to do is it's going to affect these values: this uh, pi over two, pi three pi over two and 2 pi. Now usually these, you know, in cosine happen at 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. But this minus pi, what it's going to do is it's going to shift all of these values by pi. It's going to make them all happen pi later. So 0 plus pi is pi. Um, pi over 2 plus pi. Well, pi is, is, uh, is, is 2 pi over 2, right? So if I add this to this, that would be 3 pi over 2. Pi plus pi is 2 pi. 3 pi, 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 is 5 pi over 2. 2 pi plus pi is, is 3 pi. Notice everything's just shifted by pi. So if I, if I go to 
sketch a graph of that. I, I still have the same midline, still have the same amplitude, but things are happening uh, later than they would have. There's pi over 2. There's pi. 3 pi over 2. 2 pi. 5 pi over 2. 3 pi. And as you're counting this, you could think of this as like 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. And you can kind of see the intervals there. Um, and since it's cosine that I'm graphing, I know that cosine uh, starts at the extreme, goes down to the midline, down to the lower extreme, and back up. And there's a sketch of that would look like. Notice it's just all of cosine shifted over pi. What was at 0 now starts at pi, and everything keeps going. And really, you know, this this graph is keeps going forever in both directions. We're just we're just sketching one period of it, just a convenient period of it. So let's go ahead and sketch a graph of uh, y equals eight sine um, of x minus pi over two. So this x minus pi over two that's going to be a shift to the right of pi over I'm sorry pi over four of pi over four. So let me start with those benchmark angles. And I'm going to shift it to the right pi over 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add pi over 4 to each of these values. So let's see. Uh, 0 plus pi over 4 is pi over 4. Pi over 2, I'm going to think of that in terms of pi over 4. So this is the same as uh, 2 pi over 4. Notice if I make everything a common denominator, it's really easy to add them. So like this is like 4 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4. And this uh, would be 8 pi over 4. And now if I, it's really easy for me to add them to, to pi over 4. So 2 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. 4 of them plus 1 of them is 5 pi over 4. 6 of them plus 1 of them, 7 pi over 4. 8 of them plus 1 of them, 9 pi over 4. And now when I sketch this, what I like to do is not worry about the x-axis yet. Let me put these values in. So I have uh, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. And they should be you know, equal intervals. 7 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4. And now I can think about like 3 pi over 4 would be here, 2 pi over 4 would be here, 1 pi over 4 would be here. So 0 would be about here. So notice it's easier for me to lay these down and then put my zero in than to put my zero in first and then try and scale it according to that. Um, so there's my shift. I know that it's sine. Now I have this multiplier of eight out here. Remember what this does is this is gonna mess with the amplitude. This is gonna stretch it in that direction. So this is gonna go up to eight and down to negative eight. So let me think about sine. I know that sine starts at the midline goes up, comes back down, lower extreme, comes back up. And there's a decent sketch of uh, y equals 8 sine of x minus pi over 4. All right, so let's get a sketch of this graph, of the graph of y equals 3 times cosine of 2 times x plus pi over 2. So notice we have a couple of things going on here. We have the stretch um change in the period we have a shift and we have a change in amplitude i'm going to add one thing up to here now so notice that that b is multiplied by that to really just be able to read these forms off of here this this b needs to be factored out of there um, that'll be my period and then that'll be my shift so notice my shift isn't going to be two times that my shift is just pi over two all right so let's take this a little piece at a time. So first off, we know the amplitude's three. We know it's gonna be stretched by three in both directions, up to three, down by three. Great, I can worry about that later. So there's two things going on here. One of them is this this stretch, this change in the, in the period, um, this dilation in the x direction, and then there's some shift. So I'm gonna do the dilation first, and then the shift, which hopefully makes sense. You do multiplication and then addition in order of operations. So these are all messing with the x values. These are all changing x before cosine gets to them. So we'll take these x values, 0, uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. 
And I notice that if I multiply by this 2, it's making it happen twice as fast. So my period uh, should be 2 pi divided by 2, which is, which is pi, which uh, you'll notice is going to happen here because what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is divide all these by 2 or multiply them by a half. So 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 4, and pi. There's my period of pi. Everything's been happening twice uh, or half as early as it would have. I'm not sure how to say that, twice as early? Anyway, it's closer to 0. <laughs> um, great, so there's that part's taken care of. So now I have this shift where it says plus pi over 2. So that's going to make everything happen earlier by pi over 2. So um, I already have some things in terms of over 2. These are in terms of 4. So I'm also going to think of this as also um, subtracting 2 pi over 4, just in case I need the 4 de denominator. So 0 shifts back to pi over 2. Uh, pi over 4, if I sh subtract 2 pi over 4 from that, it's going to be negative pi over 4. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. Uh, 3 pi over 4 minus 2 pi over 4 is pi over 4, one of them. And then uh, pi minus pi over 2, this is the same as, as 2 pi over 2. So that's 2 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is uh, just pi over 2. Great, so there's what my x is going to be. So uh, like I said last time, I'm going to just put these on here. So, and then I'll worry about where 0 is later. Negative pi over 2, negative pi over 4, 0. Oh, 0 is right there. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. Pi over 4, pi over 2. Great. So there's 0. So then I also know that it's stretched by 3. So 1, 2, 3. There's my, my maxes. Um, 1, 2, 3. There's my mins. And cosine starts at an extreme comes down to the middle, down to the lower extreme, back to the midline, back up. And there's my sketch. So let's try another one of these. Uh, y equals 5 times sine of 3 times x minus pi over 2. So I know that here's this amplitude stretch right here of 5. I know that my period is affected by 3. Things are happening 3 times as fast. So I'm going to divide all of these x values by 3. And that shifted by subtracting pi over 2. So it's going to move right pi over 2. So let's start with those x values. Uh, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Uh, just, just for the record, the period of this, period's usually 2 pi, is going to be that divided by 3. So it'll be 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to be multiplying all of these by a third or dividing by 3, same thing. So 0 times a third is 0. Um, pi over 2 times a third is just pi over 6. Pi times a third is pi over 3. Um, 3 pi three pi over 2 times a third. Notice the 3s will cancel out. It's going to end up being pi over 2. And then uh, 1 third times 2 pi is 2 pi over 3. So look at this, I have all this like zero, sixths, thirds, halves, thirds, but I still have, these are just evenly spaced intervals. These just go up by pi over six each time. So then I also have the shift to the right of, of pi over two. So now I'm gonna add uh, pi over two to each of these. So kind of interesting, like these are all over the place. I'm gonna think of everything just in terms of sixths right now, just so I could do some, some easy multiplying. So if I think of this as sixths, this would be um, 3 pi over 6, right? 3 sixths is 1 half. This is already in terms of sixths. If I think about this in terms of sixth, this would be 2 pi over 6. This one would be 3 pi <laughs> over 6. Let me try, try and rewrite that. And this one would be 4 pi over 6. Right, four six is two thirds. So zero plus pi over, uh, pi over two. I'll leave this one as pi over two. Is pi over two? Uh, pi over six plus three pi over six is four pi over six, and four six is two thirds. Two pi over three. 
the next one, uh, pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 6, plus 3 pi over 6 is going to be 5 pi over 6. The next one, uh, pi over 2, which is, uh, I could leave this as pi over 2. Look at that. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. Um, this 2 pi over 3, that's 4 pi over 6. So if I go 4 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6, that's 7 pi over 6. It's a ton of fraction manipulation that we're doing. Okay, so there's our x part. I'm not even going to worry about where 0 is yet. I'm just going to put these on here. So pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, pi, 7 pi over 6. So let's think about this. Like this jump from here to here is a jump of pi over 6. So this is pi over 2, which is 3 pi over 6. I'm just trying to get a sense of where 0 would be. So 3 of these distances back. So 1, 2, 3. 0 is probably going to be about here. I'm just trying to get a decent, you know, estimate for where it would be. Um, five. So my amplitude is five. So it goes from negative five to positive five. And then sine. I know that sine uh, typically starts in the middle at the midline, goes up, comes back down. So there's my graph right there. There. I just have one more that I want to do. All right, so here it is. Let's sketch a graph of this equation. Y equals 4 uh, times cosine of 1 half times the quantity x plus pi over 3. So I notice I have this stretch in amplitude of 4, so that's in this direction. This 1 half is going to slow down the period, so it's going to be stretched out in this direction. This plus pi over 3 is going to shift it left pi over 3. So let's start with these x values. So uh, if there had been no transformations on it all, my x values would be these benchmarks. But now a couple things are happening. This one half. Um, so multiplying it by, multiplying this whole thing by one half slows it down. So it actually will double each of these. Remember, it's counterintuitive, the things that happen to x. Uh, so zero, this times two uh, would be just pi, because the twos cancel out. Two pi, um, this would be three pi. And this would be 4 pi. If I if I go back to the idea of the period is um, 2 pi divided by that multiplier, divide by a half. Remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we have that. So then the next piece I want to do is uh, this, this shift of pi over 3 to the left. So I'm going to subtract pi over 3 from each of these. So the first one's pretty easy. 0 minus pi over 3 is negative pi over 3 pi. If I think about pi in terms of thirds, that would be 3 pi over 3. So 3 pi over 3 minus one of them is 2 pi over 3. Uh, 2 pi in terms of pi's over 3's would be 6 pi over 3. So subtract one of them would give me 5 pi over 3. Uh, 3 pi would be 9 pi over 3. So subtract one would give me 8 pi over threes. Uh, four, this would be 12 pi over three. Subtract one would be 11 pi over three. Good, so there's my, there's my x's. So I have negative pi over three, two pi over three, five pi over three, eight pi over three, 11 pi over three. Uh, zero, let's see, this would be about here, I would think. Negative one pi over three, positive one pi over three, positive, yeah. Stretched by four, so it's going to get up to four, down to negative four. Um, and amplitude is four. And let's see, it's cosine. Cosine typically starts at the max, comes down to the middle, down to the minimum, and then back up. Now notice that zero isn't, I'm not putting one of my critical points on zero here. 
It's just it's just these. Zero just doesn't happen to be one of them now. Great, and there's my sketch of that. Um, that's it. This lecture is shorter than lectures before, but I think that it's kind of a big idea. You're throwing a lot of things together. So take your time with the practice. Use Desmos. It's a great tool. To, uh, just kind of think about where you're at and what you're doing. Give those problems a try. Send me some questions, message me, or post some questions in the forum.